Okay, now on the second part of this magazine, I don't believe there's any recipes, but um, we're going to start with essential work. A former field hand manages vegetable farms across California's Monterey County. The photos are by Vern Fisher Photography. It's the Ag Dairy. Ryan Kelly walks a newly planted field of fennel at the Bonnet Farms field in Castroville, California. And I wish I could show you these pictures. Um, this is by Ryan Kelly from Castroville, California. The products he usually does is artichokes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, celery, cabbage, fennel, lettuce, and spinach. So that's probably where most of my lettuce comes from. Farm Organization, Farm Bureau, Grower, Shipper Association of Central California, California Artichoke Research, Board 4-H, FFA, and others. My name is Ryan Kelly. I'm a Vice President and General Manager of the Barnaret and Laguna Miss Farms. Vegetable operations in the Salina Valley and Oxnard area, born in Salinas in 1981, Started working on a mushroom ranch at night when I was 13, as soon as I could get a work permit for the general labor. Um, I was driving tractors and forklifts, forklifts and making compost for the mushroom operation. I became a part-time grower at the Mushroom Farms Incorporated in Los Lumas when I was 19. Worked that job attending Cabrillo College at 21, transferred to Cal Poly, and earned my ag business degree. That's also where he met his wife, Stephanie. Aww. 25, I became a grower liaison for Laguna Mist Farms. Stephanie took a job as a staff and office manager for Fresh Express, where she stayed until she was six months pregnant with their first child, Nessa. The second daughter, Kaylee, was born 19 months later, and he was promoted to grower manager running all growing operations for companies sourced to grow for Ocean Mist Farms in Salina Valley, Ventura regions in 2012. Started working with other operations in Mexico as well. Then Stephanie and I had a son. He passed away at two months old from SIDS. Oh, that's sad. Which was a huge shock and sadness to our whole family. We all came together, made it through, and in 2013 we had our third daughter, Elisa Luna. She'd been the glue that holds all of us together through difficult times. Rain and regulations. March 1st, after two months of dry, windy conditions, the day started off with very light rain. We don't get significant rainfall this month. We'll be right back in the drought conditions and running the water pumps 10 plus hours a day. March 2nd, woke up to extreme cold, a wet, widespread frost. The frost was blister on the artichokes from late January. Had just started to clean up and now we're having a blistering for another three or four weeks. It's tough to market frost-kissed artichokes because they aren't as pretty. The outer layer turns brown and flakes and peels. It's a shame more people don't know what the frost actually cold cooks artichokes and breaks down the hard epidermal la layer, making it more flavorful and easier to cook. March 3rd. Our workforce is the backbone of our business and determines our quality of product we put out, so we try to keep them happy within given constraints, but California's new agricultural worker hour regulations for 2020 have put a real strain on our productivity hours and the relationship with the workforce. Even though wages have increased over the past few years to keep up with increases in the minimum wage, we've had to cut hours to stay under reduced pre-overtime work week for our labor force. As a result, what should have been a raise for them has kept t their take-home pay at the same level in the past years, and in some cases lower. We continue to struggle to find balance for them and to modernize and mechanic mechanicize where we can keep costs competitive. On March 4th, getting a break to decompress is an absolute necessity in the high pressure environment of va vegetable farming. So yesterday I took a in a hockey game. It was nice to watch the hometown team with the San Jose Sharks get a win. March 5th. The California Department of Food and Agriculture wants to audit one of our companies for the new standard of food and safety systems. It's called the Produce Safety Rule. It audited my other company last fall, and then the process went so smoothly, but we had, excuse me, really had to have our house in order when the auditors got there. The importance of rain to agriculture in our valley cannot be overstated. March 6th. We begin implementing some new 
methods of establishing transplants like new process. It wasn't without hiccups. <laughs> I just spent some time explaining to our foreman that the GPS systems our precision planners have to follow behind each tractor pass exactly or the plants will not line up properly. If this happens, the field will not irrigate uniformly, causing inconsistencies in size and maturity. These practices are aimed at reducing labor, but the workforce really has to know what they're doing for it to work properly. March 7th, an ominous forecast has predicted 1.5 to 2 inches of rain next week, so tomorrow I'll round up the troops and go over all the planning and preparation work that needs to be done ahead of time. Seawater and drought. On March 8th, light rain fell overnight, but because everything has been so dry lately, it didn't stop or slow down any work. Any ir and an irrigation planting crew worked today, which was Sunday, despite the added cost of labor to make sure that the critical lots in the difficult areas got planted before the impending rain. I got some much needed family time today, shopping at Costco. The store was crazy with people buying up household supplies, sanitizer, and they ran out of toilet paper, paper towels. The coronavirus has caused a kind of public hysteria that I've never seen before. March 9th. It's looking like we may end up with a dry March, setting drought conditions for 2020 growing season. That translates to more pump and irrigator hours and a higher cost product. The gamble of bringing in labor for the extra hours last weekend doesn't look like it's going to pay off. I met a local tractor dealer group to provide insights into our struggle and how they relate to our needs and purchase preferences. <clears throat> Green is still gold in this business, but they're expensive. There's a lot of lower cost competition out there and they are hungry. We, ran, we run John Deere, New Holland Case, Caterpillar equipment. Our fleet is diverse to accommodate the variability to, and the type of ground and operation that is performed. March 10th, we do almost all of our spring heavy tractor tillage work before the first official day of spring. Drivers will get fewer hours for the next few months, but we'll have to find them enough work so they don't go looking for it elsewhere. The bright spot of my day was taking the kids to the 4-H meeting. Community involvement is very important for our youth and the future of our nation. My girls are involved in shooting sports, swine projects, and community service. On March 11th, the Castroville Seawater Intrusion Project, better known as CSIP, hosted a meeting this morning with local farmers who use recycled water from the project. This 25-year-old program was created to combat seawater intrusion from the Monterey Bay into the local aquifers. CSIP provides affected ranches with treated water for surface water storage reservoirs and supplemental wells. The project has slowed the spread of seawater intrusion, but the years of drought have begun to move the line further inland. The importance of rain to agriculture in our valley cannot be overrated, overstated. Sorry. March 12th, my next priority is to review our Ventura County ranches and crops, artichokes, celery, and Brussels sprouts. The artichoke season ended in late January, but other two crops, which have been in the ground since the fall and getting ready to harvest, planting operations on the last few fields finished about 10 days ago and the first lots were planted will harvest in about 18 days. The crops will seem to be healthy and productivity should be fairly high levels on both crops. On March 13th, wet ground made it difficult for me to get around last night, so I finished looking at the fields today and met with our partner who custom farms their ranches. I parked on the edge of the ranch and hoofed it in across 300 acres of production fields with about five pounds of mud on each boot. Everything looked pretty good with the exception of a healthy crop of weeds. Our grower rotated a hemp crop on some of our grounds last fall and the lots that went later in the harvest cedar season dropped a ton of seeds. I was happy to make it home in time for a nice birthday dinner with my family though. Steak and potatoes are always my favorite. March 14th. Got up at 4 a.m. to find the land starting to get wet from the light showers followed by a strong wind. Because the ground has been so dry we were able to plant three fields and much needed heavy rain came in the late afternoon. When rain comes after a long dry period it brings a lot of atmospheric nitrogen which gives the crops a big boost and then we can finally give the irrigation systems and the wells a break. Planting and a pandemic. March 15th. 
Normally the day after a big storm is a perfect time to take advantage of the powder in the mountains. Snowboarding is one of my few passions outside of work, but unfortunately the resorts are closed due to a new term, social distancing. The term of a common side effect of social distancing is cabin fever. Um, they show these beautiful pictures at the top where it says a farm worker harvests artichokes at the Bonet Farm, Salinas Valley location. Also in Salinas, Ryan cuts open an artichoke to inspect the quality during the harvest. And then they show Ryan working a field of romaine at one of the Castroville locations, which one of the best lettuces, just saying, is romaine. March 16th, big storms lead, led to a day of ditch and water clearing for irrigation staff. Instead of putting water on the crops, we were trying to take as much excess water out of the ends and the edges of the field. Possible, a crucial planning break. When all vegetable growers are to plant, every field is scheduled and in perfect condition. It makes for good production but poor market. Prices due to oversupply at the harvest. March 17th. The morning brought unexpected showers, just enough to keep us out another day or so, depending on what follows. A good time to catch up on what the office task. March 18th. We'll be back doing light tractor work tomorrow and getting things ready to plan as long as the sun and the afternoon winds hold and there are no more showers. Being out there for more than four or five days at a time of a year is tough. Things can start to stack up into the dis distance, dinis, I can't even say it, density of plantings get tighter. Okay, let's see here. I just lost my place. The first non-artichoke vegetable crop harvest took place despite the wet weather. Two crews of about 25 people each cut cauliflower on one of our wettest ranches, which made a huge mess of the fields surrounding the roads. We sent tractors out to scrape the roads and clean up as much as possible, but it will create more work for us when we turn over the soil to plant the next crop of the season. We try to get out two crops per season on each of the lots, one spring, summer crop, and one fall after turning the ground up. All of our crops are grown in the spring, summer, and fall. I lost except for clipped spinach and Brussels sprouts, which are picked off the stalk and hand harvested using a knife specialized for the commodity. March 19th, I'm glad the ag workers are considered essential and can still leave for the house to work. If we all had to stay home, the food shortage would be more damaging than the virus itself. March 20th, we finally put it all in a, a full day of quality work. The thirsty early spring crops got a huge shot in the arm for the rain and that have started to take off. It's amazing to see how fast the ground absorbed two, two to three inches of water. March 21st. I'm concerned that with all the craziness in the world right now, each day's wages become more crucial to our workers and the economy. Fortunately, we have not had to lay off our workforce. My wife always reminds me that her father told her to, quote, marry a farmer, you will never go hungry, end quote. His words stay with me on days like this. They have another two pictures here I wish I could share with you, but again, the camera's not working. Farm workers harvest artichokes in Castroville below. Harvesters unload artichokes from their canasta baskets at the farm in Salinas Valley. Spring crops and salmon fishing. March 22nd, I caught up on my property work, namely trimming the huge, beautiful oak trees that surround my home. I ended up with a dump trailer full of trimmings and a cord of fi firewood. Chainsaw work is very physical taxing, but there's something peaceful about it to me, about the humming of a saw and the smell of sawdust. Actually, I find it kind of peaceful, side note, just using a handsaw and getting out there and just going to work. And if the city does not do their work this year, I'm going to probably have to do it for them. Just saying. Anyway, we've got a beautiful tractor here. It looks like it either is raining or snowing, or maybe he's doing something with water in the mud. But let's see what the little caption says, Donna, before you say what it says. Okay, good idea. After a particularly wet, muddy harvest, farm workers use tractors to scrape the roads and clean up things ahead of the next planting. Okay, so they're scraping the road. I don't know why it shows some water-like stuff behind here, but maybe they're spraying the water off of the dirt road there. That could be. March 23rd, morning brought another 2.5 inches of rain, depending on which cloud given rain under. My local ranches cover about a 35-mile th span in the Salinas Valley, and there's a huge variability. 
in the microclimate of each property. The lighter soils farther down south dry faster, which make it easier to get with work done with under most conditions. But this sto storm dumped heavier rain on the southern end of the valley. The advantage of having light soils to work with under wet conditions was negated by higher rain totals because they don't hold together as well as heavy soils under extreme weather conditions. March 25th. Normally, March's wet weather is heavy and fast, and when it dries, it dries quickly, but not this year. The lingering moisture is kind of depressing, but at least the wind kicked up and the sun came out most afternoons this week so I could go out in the fields and look at the crops without making a mess. March 26. Last night's storm was so cold that it dropped snow on the mountains. Seeing these conditions at this time of year was very strange. It was too wet to get out and evaluate early spinach and lettuce to see how they sustained any damage, but the sun came out and dried things enough that we could put out light track layer tractors which run on tracks instead of wheels in the fields to tighten furrow between the rows and get them ready to plant. March 27th. My tractor operators got to lots of fields ready to plant in the days preceding the last round of storms, which allowed us to jump right in before 9 a.m. and start planting. When you're out for five or six days, there's a ton of catch-up work to do in a short time, so not as to fall out of the planting window for each field. It looks like we'll be back on the track in short order. Stephanie and I got the kids out to the beach this evening for a nice walk and sled rides down the sand dunes. It's the perfect way to spend a Friday evening when everything else is shut down. March 28th. Between the two companies I manage, we have put 14 vegetable plantings in the last two and a half days of semi-dry weather. Each field was between 6 and 16 acres, so that was a lot of ground to cover in a short time. It used to be that in wet conditions only a few people could plant in a few select areas, but during the light supply times that followed, the market price was very good. But over the last five years, most of the valley's vegetable farmers have become adept at using specialized equipment to work in wet conditions. March 29th. I'm looking forward to start the salmon season here in the Bay Area. It is the highlight of my year, and it provides tasty and healthy sustenance for my family. My kids love salmon salamashi, and there ain't many ways that I don't enjoy it. I hope that they don't try to shut down the launch ramps. That would be, put a real bummer on top of all this crazy times. Uh, it shows the artichokes await harvest at the Bonet Farms in the California Salinas Valley. And they kind of look like a flower, the artichokes does. Just saying on a side note. March 30th. Today was the first time in two weeks I was able to run down Ventura County and look at the 300 acres of the spring harvest crops. The winter artichoke crop has finally been chopped down and worked into the ground. Artichokes normally have a six to ten week window from the harvest to final production is year round. Celery harvest starts tomorrow. Celery gets a single harvest and year round production from April to November in this region. Brussels sprouts are a little more than six weeks away from harvest, but both crops looking pretty good. Brussels sprouts end up with one to three harvests, depending on how, on the uniformity of the bud maturity on the stalks. Production is limited May through November in my area. Insects have started to pick up. To make sure the crops come off clean, we have to monitor insect population with visual scouting and traps, remove host plants and weeds, and spray when conditions indicate the pest populations are nearing economic injury levels. March 31st, the temp topped out just shy of 70 in the northern Salinas Valley today. Although the ranches are still wet, most work is going along with a little difficulty. The clear, warmish weather through January and February brought on a spring insect pressure this year. I saw cabbage looper caterpillars on young lettuce, romaine that was hit by a plant virus transmitted by thrips. The lettuce virus was devastating last fall, so to see it starting up again was quite dis <coughs> excuse me, discouraging. On a positive note, the spring artichokes were mostly cleaned up from the February frost where the market price was decent and April is normally a good month here with nice weather and strong markets. Post script. Spring 2020 saw very high production due to mostly favorable weather. That meant the crops yield were good but the market condition was poor. Consequently, a lot of crop was left unharvested because the supply exceeded demand. Markets were also depressed by the shutdown of food and service industry. We most likely will reduce the acreage we plant for those outlets in the 2021 season, but time will tell. I hope that they have a good season. I wish that for them. You always want to wish people well, you know. 
they have this really beautiful and quite the picture speaks so much volumes they have this cow that looks like it's peeking in on this little girl who's playing with her cows inside like a barn area it says people and pals and this was the winner photo it says a herd of her own having animals as friends is rewarding and teaches us so much about life I love doing farm chores with my dad. I'm blessed to be able to have raise my kids the same way. My daughter loves animals so much that she has her own indoor ranch and travels to the feedlot with us so she can feed her own little friends as well. Jessica Christie from Maple Creek, Saskatchewan. So that's in Canada. They have a picture here with a little girl watching her father uh, work on the fence. It says, Where We Work, Honorable Mention. Papa's apprentice. My husband Mike was building a new fence for our cattle and one of our daughters was helping out. For the kids, these experiences are both fun and educational. Bree Ryan from Inman, Kansas. Where we work. Honorable mention. Snowy satisfaction. There's a beautiful uh, dog here looking at the cows in the snow and the fence and there's a little uh, looks like a pond that they're in and they're, it looks like they're pushing the cows up towards the fence. It says, farmers and ranchers never let the weather deter them from their ob obligation. We just buckle up and get it down. done. I enjoy getting my chores throughout the season. It gives me the time to reflect and appreciate all my blessings. Shane Cobb from Blairsville, Georgia. We've got some more pictures that I wish you could see. Uh, they got this beautiful longhorn cattle. And then we have a guy looking out at the crops. It looks like he's standing inside a barn area. People and Pals, honorable mention, those lovely longhorns who doesn't love a long portrait of a Texas longhorn. They are such incredible animals with those beauties. They live in Woodsboro, Maryland, and they belong to Kelsey Roderick. Hannah Noel Photography from Hanover, Pennsylvania. Honorable mention is People and Pals. Welcome weather. My husband is the hardest working man I know during the chores on a July evening. He took a moment to watch the pouring rain. He is so happy. The crops really needed that water. Both our hearts were full from Lily uh, Gurch in Monticello, Wisconsin. Uh, we've got In the Field Celebrating Life and Work in the Country. It says, Keep rolling along. My husband filled frost seeds, grass seed into our wheat fields in the late winter, early spring. It's a chilly job, but a good way to get a second crop off the land, and the sun was glistening off the frost and made it absolutely beautiful. Maureen Weaver from Bath, New York. You always think when you think of New York, like the bustling cities, you know, and Manhattan with, like, the Statue of Liberty, but you don't think of farming, you know? So it makes you appreciate that area as well. Okay... We've got, oh, I wish you could see this. Westies Down South. These adorable farm pups keep their noses to the grindstone and their eyes on the sky. With a farm so full of activities and chores, it's a good to have more than one set of paws. Della and David Miller from Mobile, Alabama. They sh show their two, well, maybe even three little dogs here named Waldo and Fiona. Their breed is West Highland White Terrier. Their job is yard work. Their best friends are each other. Their favorite snacks are cheese crunchy lettuce hearts. Waldo Abernathy and Fiano Ray, a.k.a. Fi, are wonderful Westies who help manage our five acres of farm. We had good experience with energetic, intelligent Jack Russell Terriers, which steered us toward the West Highland breed. Once we had Waldo, we wanted to find him a sister, preferably one with those trademark big ears. Enter Fiona, who came to us in, from a farm in Missouri. We loved her from the day we met. She is perfect mix of sweetness and mischief. We're always weeding, and Waldo pulls weeds alongside as he likes to help round up any stray chickens or turkeys when it's time to put them to roost for the evening, though he sometimes finds himself at odds with our rooster, Mr. Handsome, as he protects his flock. 
Waldo also enjoys riding out to pasture on our four-wheeler, safe and sound in his car seat. Now Fi prefers to ride, run beside us in case something important happens and she has to investigate. After a long day of work outside, Waldo enjoys sitting in front of the television to watch his favorite shows. Fiano is our resident hunter of rodent snakes and li lizards. She also is on the air traffic control duty, monitoring all the planes that fly in and out of our local airport. When she hears a plane engine rev up, she begins to accelerate. She runs to fetch Waldo, and they circle the yard at full speed, keeping their eyes on the sky. These two remarkable dogs have made the life of a farm a total joy. And that is all that I'm sharing with you from this wonderful Farm and Ranch um, February-March 2021 issue. Be sure to pick it up. It will give you an appreciation. It will give you a grateful heart, and it will bring you much joy. So sharing that with you and stay tuned for Montana Mavericks the wedding book so don't go anywhere